So, uh, hello everybody, my name is Svetlana, so it's my first time here, so it's cool to be here and um, I'm glad to be the part of the party. Uh, so, as for my co-speaker, well, um, I am hope he's on his way, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, he likes Kanoe and I took airplane, he took Kanoe and I'm here now <laughs> and my co-speaker might be in the middle of the ocean. So, today I'm gonna talk alone. Um, I'm gonna talk about the things I'm sure you know well. Uh, it's all about shell codes, zero days, memory corruption vulnerabilities. So, uh, we are in 2012 now, so why, would, uh, why should we care about shell codes at all? Um, we all know that it's pretty old technique, too old for Web 2.0, too old for some cloud stuff, and um, if I remember everything correctly, um, such attacks was, were first published in 1999. Um, so, um, also we can look at some Microsoft security reports uh, about malware propagation, and it says that the number one reason for malware propagation now is not zero days. It's surprisingly <laughs> user unawareness. So, and uh, the role of zero days is less than 1%. Um, and um, as for endpoint security, okay, it deals well with non malware. And in such circumstances, why should we care about unknown at all? But uh, let's look to the other side of the coin. Uh, yes, memory corruption is still there. We still have a huge uh, bunch of code written in C, programmers still making mistakes, programmers still making vulnerabilities in their code, in their products. And um, we remember um, Microsoft report about vulnerability in remote stock protocol. Uh, we also know that uh, tools like Metasploit framework and related to it uh, is widely used now for some black hat communities, uh, by pentesters also, uh, and um, we shouldn't uh, forget also about target attacks of critical infrastructure such as uh, planes, trains, water pumps. Um, it's really serious and um, we should care about it because it can lead to human victims, so it's worth to detect it as fast as possible. And um, about endpoint security again, uh, it's mostly signature based and uh, there's nothing to do without zero days. Okay, um, that's another point of view. Um, so, <laughs> that's why I should care about shell codes. <laughs> uh, so, uh, it is CTF competition. Uh, during CTF games, uh, teams usually write uh, zero days uh, with the help of automatic tools such as uh, Metasploit and others, or even manually from scratch. So, um, during the process, uh, all game network is full of exploits all the time. Uh, and uh, if your team is able to detect uh, such exploits and analyze it, uh, you can gather some profit from it. Like, you can gather some ideas from other team, you can gather, um, I don't know, you can increase your defense level. Um, and um, another point of view, we all live in digital area, and uh, what is true that uh, we trust almost all fields of our life to digital devices, such as cell phones, laptops, and some other. We trust them, bank accounts, health records, uh, personal and private information. We share it also with social networks, cloud providers. And the problem there is that um, such devices use um, a huge amount of different software written by programmers who work under pressure of time limitation, resource limitation, uh, managers who prefer quantity and no quality. And uh, here is IBM statistics. Uh, it's um, increasing the amount of vulnerability disclo disclosures each year. So, um, as you can see, the trend is not so positive. Okay, uh, what do we have about shell code detection methods? So, um, mostly it's a, it exists in research papers only. If someone knows, 
um, available open source tools. You can tell me, I would be very happy. Uh, and um, so as about um, tools described in research papers, uh, we can divide them into two classes. There are static analysis methods, dynamic analysis methods, and hybrid also. So um, the most common techniques uh, used by static analysis are listed here. Here it's signature matching, um, control flow graph analysis, instruction flow graph analysis, nobsled detection, and also um, methods of abstract execution. Uh, dynamic analysis method presented by emulation and automata analysis techniques, and hybrid analysis methods could use all of those techniques. So um, if we look at those methods, we can notice that. Um, None of them can detect every type of shell codes. So uh, if we want to detect everything, we, we can simply try to execute one algorithm after another, but in, it would be extremely slowly. It's a boring slide, let's keep it. <laughs> so um, <laughs> now I'm going to try a little bit science. Um, that's why shell code detection is feasible at all. Uh, it goes to viruses uh, which are rich with features. Um, shell codes has certain uh, size limitation and structure limitation. Um, and um, given the set of shell codes detection algorithms, why don't we try to construct uh, a classifier which will be optimal in terms of false positive rate, uh, execution time, and at that point we shouldn't also forget about false negative rate. Um, so, as the first step, we try to identify some shell code features. Uh, it could be generic, it could be specific. Uh, some of them could be detected only by static analysis. Uh, some of them could be detected by dynamic analysis only. And uh, some examples of them are listed in the current slide. Um, so, given such set of shell code features, we can divide uh, shell code space into several classes. and. Um, in such a way that uh, one class can include uh, one or even more show code features. Okay, um, here's an example of what I said in the previous slide. Uh, we, could, uh, we could name such specific features as, for example, correct disassembly from each and every byte of set or existence of multi-byte instruction. And, uh, we could name such common features, for example, like um, correct disassembly into a chain of at least kind instructions and so on. Totally we identified 19 classes and uh, here's a significant remark that um, none of existing shell code methods uh, provide complete coverage of identified classes. Um, during analysis of existing shell code methods we noticed that uh, mostly, um, that almost all of them uh, could be presented like uh, such like uh, some kind of combination of elementary classifiers or detectors of specific shell code features. Um, moreover, um, all of them use some common steps during their, their analysis, like uh, disassembling stage, uh, reconstruction of control flow graph, reconstruction of instruction flow graph. Um, uh, thus, uh, it seemed reason reasonable for us to um, implement shell code detection library in a way like described in the current slide. Um, so <laughs> here is the main idea of our hybrid shell code detector. So um, we tried to construct optimal uh, data flow graph uh, from elementary classifiers implemented in the shell code detection library. Uh, and if some classifier concludes uh, flow to be legitimate, uh, such flow isn't passed doesn't pass to the other classifiers. So, and um, if we try to put uh, classifiers which uh, runs faster at the top of such topology, uh, we could uh, reduce legitimate flow as fast as possible. Um, so, that's how it works. Uh, we, we are given the set of elementary classifiers. And uh, at the next step, we choose from them such classifiers which, which provides complete coverage of uh, shell code classes um, detected by entire set um, and uh, which are optimal in terms of uh, false positive rate and uh, execution time. So uh, then we construct a lawyer of uh, resulting graph and repeat that step. 
So we end up with decision-making model which analyzes all output from elementary classifiers and concludes uh, the flow to be legitimate or to be malicious. Um, it's, uh, one of the important goals of that work was to uh, minimize false positive rate. Um, we noticed that we could achieve um, such goal uh, in simple linear topology when we execute, uh, execute uh, one elementary classifier to another and um, there is no flow reduce, reducage in such case. And um, there are relation results. We compared our hybrid topology with simple linear topology uh, in four different data sets. Um, it was uh, exploit data set exploits generated by Metasploit framework. Um, it was benign uh, Windows and Linux binaries, random data and multimedia also. And here's visualization. <laughs> so uh, red line stands for uh, linear topology, blue line stands for hybrid topology. As, um, and as you can see uh, on some data sets, um, Hybrid topology is more effective than linear, up for 45 times. So, there is a couple of use cases for hybrid classifier. Um, it can be used uh, such um, detection and filtering tool for zero days in the network. It also can be used in CTF competitions, um, as it could help to increase uh, defense level of team and could help to gather ideas from other teams. And just a second, it's a little bit of demonstration. Okay. Um, so you can download the tool from Kitoros. <coughs> build them, build them, build them. Oh, sorry. So it's this case of detection shell codes in the network. <coughs> so we can see um, we catch something in this case of detection shell codes in the files. We are using uh, exploits generated by different models of Metasploit framework. As we can see, we are detecting different classes of shellcodes, like plain shellcodes, shellcodes which contains knob sledge, um, and also which contains decryption. So. So I'm done. <laughs> Good news, everyone. So God's maybe now detected. So. <laughs> Now it can be detected up to 40 times faster than before. And you can download our tools and use it. So um, if you have any questions, here's some information about me and my co-speaker, Dennis. And also information about research papers used in the current presentation. Thank you. <laughs>